Hey everyone, this is Nathan with Citizen Nerd here, and today we're going to do the upgrades that I promised you. They came in the mail. So we are going to upgrade the LCD, which is LED backlit. I can get it in the frame there. <laughs> and the other thing we're going to do is the BIOS upgrade, which fixes one of the major problems it has with MIDI and a few other things. And that's a lot of bubble wrap. But it got here safe. That is the chip. Okay. So, let's get started. First thing we have to do is remove this screw, and this screw, and one back here, and this screw, and that screw. Now, these, the four in the front here, or on the top rather, are the same kind of screw. They're, they're these. You get to focus. There we go. Okay. So the one in back here is a little different. It's a finer thread screw, but it's the only one like that. So you only have to worry about one. So it should be five screws, and that's it. At that point, the whole thing is hinged and comes back. Okay, so today we're going to be replacing this IC with our new one. And we're replacing this board here, which is underneath this, with the new board. So first of all, we'll go with this, because this is an easy thing to check. So you just simply have to remove the screws. So we'll be removing this, and there's just a few screws to remove here. So it's this screw. Keep those together. And this screw. And that one. Now, if you're going to change the LED to a different style LED, that's actually right here. Well, I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about the backlight for the LCD itself. So the whole thing just lifts off. And well, and that's it right there. We're replacing this piece. Now you'll notice there's like a glass on top of all this, so we have to do a little bit of cosmetic work, nothing major. And this screw here is a ground pin, which sounds really good, doesn't it? <laughs> but that's all that is, so that's not a big deal. So we will swap that piece out. And you'll need to remove a couple screws from the corner edges of this. One there. And one there. That screw. And we're going to remove that screw. And those hold the LCD part in. You'll need your smaller screwdriver for that. Uh, it is Phillips. Just set those aside and keep those together. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the board itself here. That can be a little tight sometimes too, so but just be careful. You shouldn't damage anything when you're doing that, especially on this piece. This piece is actually going away. This piece you have to keep. So. <laughs> So if you're replacing the LEDs, those are the LEDs you'd replace. Now keep in mind, unless someone sells you the pre-assembled board, you're going to have to desolder them and everything else. So but that's okay. This is the piece we're going to replace. We're actually just replacing this board. Let's separate from that, which is just glued on. You also have to remove the plastic from this. That's just double stick tape. So, because it's clamped in here, 
technically that way. Um, I'm not too worried about it because it's not really going to come loose. So, I'll go ahead and slide this thing back together. It goes that way. Okay. I'll take my little screwdriver here. Put these little screws back in. Now, before you do the next step of this, which would be replacing the BIOS, you should go ahead and fire up everything and make sure this one turns on and it's in the right or correct orientation, not upside down. Um, so. Okay. And actually, you could fire it up by holding it right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing kind of pieced back together a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and instead of feeding that through, I'm going to let it be on the outside. Because it sits like this in there. Okay, so um, go ahead and I've noticed this one's actually a little thicker. I don't know if there's any particular reason for that. But, yep. I'm going to use the bubble wrap that it came with. Set it there and go ahead and plug it in and turn it on so it boots up. And then I'm going to um, lay this over top so I can see everything that needs to be on there. Hilariously, you can actually see it better than I can. I'm just at the exact opposite angle. I'm on this side of the thing here on that side. Um, but looking straight onto it, it looks pretty good. Actually looks better than angle, which is really, really kind of funny. Okay, but see, that's giving me now the, inter the entire information I need. So I'm going to line that where I can see everything. All right. Let's see if it allows you to see it there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Except I do actually have it upside down. <laughs> Let me think. So let's do... No, that's right. No, I got it right. I'm sorry. I did it right. Because you still want to have 28 and then and that information and it is upright. Okay, so I gotta think it sits like that. Well it's in there, so it has to go down like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut it back off. So let's see it go off here. Just so nothing gets hurt while I'm putting this thing back together. Now, one thing I also noticed is that the screws now um, are not going to be as far in because this thing's a little thicker. So when you're doing this, just put it in a couple turns just enough to get the, the screws to, to grab a few of the threads, not a lot. Okay. And then we're going to just adjust it down a little bit at a time here. So we're not trying to kill it. So let's see how it looks. I can read it pretty good. And I know it has to, so <laughs> I think that'll work. Okay, get that back where we're going there. And... Make a slight tweak on that, just bending it a little bit. Okay, so that should hold okay. Now, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and at least put a piece of, you know, just a dab of glue on this, or maybe a piece of tape, because keep in mind, the old one, this piece, this is the old one. The new one is a little thicker, because the backlight adds, let's see if I can get that to where, 
adds another layer in here. Okay, so this this thing, this piece here is actually thicker because there's a whole other layer. Okay, for the backlight itself. Okay, next to do is the BIOS. So, this is socketed, which is really great because it's really easy to change. You'll need your little flathead screwdriver. Uh, you could use plastic ones if you have that. It'd probably be a little safer. Make sure it's off and unplugged. You come over here and you're just going to give it a little bit of a... Just a bump and you can hear it probably a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to move this little capacitor out of the way a little bit there. I'm just going to give it just an ever so slight little... A little bump at a time. Now if you had a IC puller this would be a lot quicker. Honestly I haven't seen my IC puller in years so I'm just gonna have to be careful. And there you go. Keeping the orientation but you know, if you notice there's a little arrow there that points to pin one. Pin one from the notch, that's pin one. One through whatever this way, and then around the other side, going back that way. Is there a new BIOS? Yeah, when you're looking at these, you wanna make sure that the pins should all be straight. Make sure those are straight. Now remember, pin one is pin one is here because of the notch and pin one. So we're going to set it into the socket carefully. Okay. Let's see where the pins line up. Carefully go in here. We're going to wiggle it down, making sure that the pins on the other side also line up. You get to see that there. Okay. Let's scoot this little. There we go. Okay, and it should sit like that. Now, look at both sides, make sure everything's seated in the right holes. That's it. So now we got this, this in there. I'm going to take our old chip and put it back in the anti static foam. So, this is if something goes wrong, it can go backwards. And I put it in the little anti static bag. Okay. I'm going to set that aside and keep that handy just in case something does go wrong. Because unfortunately things do. Now while you're in here, you should also check to make sure none of the capacitors are bulged in the power supply. Uh, you should also look for any of the you know other miscellaneous things that need done. Um, I have replaced the battery already with a CR2032. Uh, you should go ahead and, and if it's full of dust, you should go ahead and dust it as well. But honestly, everything in this thing works fine. I could probably dust back here a little bit, and I'll probably do that at a later date. Right now I'm just wanting to get the thing fired up and running. Okay. okay. So now we've completed the upgrade. So you should see special edition here. And it's ready to go. So the internal voices are all still there. <laughs> Yay, it worked. Anyway, so that's how to do it. And at this point, you just simply have to put the screws back in the case that you took out, which I won't bore you with that because honestly, it's just putting a screw back in a hole. That's not that hard. So, and we'll hook it up here and play it in a second and show you that it still functions.
Okay, so we're powered up here, and you can see it has set up on the bass sound right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to select my favorite, which is probably the piano sound. And let's try it and see if it sounds good. Still sounds great. So let's try one of the famous 80s, 80s patches, which is well. All right, and Kenny Loggins' favorite. Love that slap bass. <laughs> anyway. So that's how you do it. That's how you do your upgrades to your DX7, putting in the backlight and upgrading to the special edition BIOS, which fixes a bunch of the other stuff. And it's still in beautiful, beautiful shape. Until next time, it's Nathan. Enjoy. And Happy New Year. <laughs>